Testing, got it? I'll start over. Hi, my name is Ken Silverman, and I work for Voxon. Today I'm going to show you the Voxibox. So the machine I brought here today is not our best model, unfortunately. We did have somebody cancel, so I'm actually the software guy, and I happen to have my own development model. And yesterday I spent a lot of time making this box to sort of hide the insides. They don't quite want people to see that yet. So that's why I have that box there, but you can get a perfect demo with that box there. Um, when I start running this later, I'll ask all of you guys to come up to the front. You get a much better view that way. Anyway, so I'm the chief computer scientist. I'm the, pretty much the guy who does all the software for this company. And just to give you an introduction, okay, that is one of our fellows in Australia. He is looking at a chess game, and you can actually play chess, and I'll show you that demo later. Always good to start with a cool picture, right? Okay, Ooh. So our company right now is about five people. I'm Ken Silverman, we have a guy in New York, a guy in New Jersey, he's the one who actually built this system. And then we have two guys in Australia, and it's kind of interesting how this company formed. It was originally two completely separate groups, and then one day, about a year or two ago, one group discovered the other, wrote an email saying, hey, maybe instead of competing, let's team up. So now we have two groups kind of working together. We've never actually met each other yet, which is kind of interesting. I'm sure we will someday. But uh, so we have a version in the US, a version in Australia, and everyone uses the same software which I wrote. Anyway, moving on. So this is a bit of my past history. Maybe some of you have heard of some of these. Um, so my first game was called Ken's Labyrinth. That was released January 93 which was later re-released through Epic Mega Games. And then after I worked on that, I was hired by Apogee Software, which later sort of turned into 3D Realms, same company really. So I wrote the build engine for them, and I just decided to get a screenshot of the first level. How many of you have recognized that picture? Okay, more than half. Yeah, pretty much anybody in their 30s who's played a video game would recognize that. So, cool crowd today. Um, Vox Lab is something I did after I left 3D Realms. Um, it's a complete voxel engine, resolution 1024 by 1024, 256 high. And it was kind of inspired by an old game called Comanche Maximum Overkill. That was released way back in 93. But that was ahead of its time, the first height map engine. Well, Vox Lab is like that, except it supported full six degrees of freedom and could handle room over room, so you could really model anything with it. And this is one of our best screenshots. So this is an environment that was created by my friend Tom, who lives in Poland, who is now working in Germany, but anyway, that's beside the point. So, about the Voxy Box. I don't know how many of you can see this, but I have a square screen here, about four inches by four inches, and that'll actually be moving up and down by a little bit uh, under two inches. And the way it works, it actually generates a full 3D volume, so you could display Princess Leia in it, for example. Not that we've tried that yet, but we will. <laughs> so far, I've been working mostly on games and trying to get the software development kit ready. So we have, in addition to the screen moving up and down, a high-speed projector. And that's hidden inside the box. I'll talk about that on the next slide. The nice thing about a display like this is you don't have to wear glasses. The pixels are actually there. Look at it from any angle, and it's really there. It's full 3D. And there have been other companies who have made things like this, but not quite with our design with a moving up and down screen. There was a company from like 2002 to 2009 in Burlington, Mass, called Actuality Systems. So they made something like this with sweat volume, except their display rotated. And there are some nice properties about that, but there's one bad thing. 
when it's rotating like this, there's a little problem in the middle of the screen. You sort of see sort of a tornado thing because that's always being lit, so it's a lot brighter than the rest. I like to call it a singularity. With this kind of a screen, you don't have that problem in the middle. The entire display is like continuous. Anyway, so let's see. Our motor's moving up and down 20 times a second, and you can see the stats of the projector there. So I've already talked about the size of our system. We have a bigger one, which is sitting somewhere in the New York area, which is the one we hope to bring, but maybe next time, maybe next year. Who knows, next year we might have one even bigger than that. Um, so what are the challenges of making something like this? Well, to have something moving up and down 20 times a second for two or three inches, that's pretty hard to do, to make it go reliably. One of the things we like to do is take advantage of resonance. And if you do that, you can save a bit of energy and it does simplify some other things. The other big problem is how do you synchronize the projector with this moving thing? One is you could use a sound card to output a sine wave and that could run a motor and that's how we did it originally. I've since replaced that with a microprocessor. It gets a bit tighter synchronization that way. Other good things is you can get feedback from the position of the screen. And if you do that, you can get it really nice. If you don't do that, then you kind of find yourself manually adjusting it like a vertical hold knob on an old analog TV, and you kind of get tired of that. Oh, here's our second picture. I like to just throw these randomly in the talk. So here we're playing Pac-Man, and it looks like Pac-Man is just about to get eaten by a ghost if he hasn't already been eaten. So I'll show you that game later. All right, so now I'll talk a little bit about the software development kit. And I've heard that some of you may have tried that and had trouble. Have any of you downloaded the SDK? Uh, oh. yeah. Got one person in the back. All right, so I'm talking mainly to him. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so the SDK is made as a DLL file, so you can use almost any language as long as it's Windows. Um, so the DLL handles all of the hardware stuff. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, I've written examples so far in C or C++. You can use C Sharp and Java. And if you want to write your own DLL driver, you can just look at those examples, study the H file, and I'm sure you can make it work in Visual Basic, for example, or whatever else supports DLL. So on the bottom here, I've just listed a few of the applications that I've written. Voxatron is actually not mine. That's the one that we have uh, a third-party developer who's been working with us for a little over a year so far. His name is Joseph White. And it's kind of inspired from the old game called Robotron, which this crowd would probably recognize. Um, and yeah, I'll show you some of those other demos later on the real thing. So some of the things that you can do in the SDK is I've got various drawing functions. You can draw a voxel, of course, a line, a box, a polygon, mesh, sphere, cone, text. And some of these I just got working in the last week. The cone turns out to be a very handy thing because you can do cylinders with it as well as lots of cool effects. Some, if you're very ambitious, you could do low-level programming. I've always been a fan of direct draw. It's not called that anymore. It's now part of Direct 3D or maybe even Direct 2D. But I've always been the kind of guy who enjoyed plotting every pixel myself, having full control, using the CPU to do it. So I give you that ability, but I don't expect anybody to actually do it that way. If you do, you're very brave. Um, so in addition to that stuff, I also support all the standard SDL type functions, keyboard, mouse, timer, um, and the reason I do take that over is one of my older models actually took exclusive control of the audio. So if I didn't provide some kind of access to that, the games would have had no sound. Anyway. Oh. Ah, third screenshot. So the guy in the background there, his name is Will Tamblin. 
he's part of our Australian team. And I guess he's just testing some new model. It looks like a bunch of people standing around a room. Very cool shot. All right, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Voxybox competition might run. One of the many competitions here is a Voxybox compo for the first time here this year. And my role, since there's only one Voxybox, and you can see how long it took me to set it up, I'm going to one who's going to have to run the thing, of course. And I will help the teams in any way I can. As far as I'm concerned, everyone's a winner. And I don't really see why they're... Well, anyway, we'll have fun. Okay, yeah, okay. That's kind of the way it should be. All right. So if we have many people trying to compete for time with this machine, fortunately, I do have a simulator, which I will show you on the projector. It's a software simulator. It renders a 3D view of what you would see on there. And I have various rendering modes. Turns out the orthogonal perspective is the best quality. I do have perspective rendering modes, which do look cool, but it's a little bit more aliasing. You'll see. All right. So I figured at this time I could probably try writing a very quick demo using the SDK. And I wrote up here a bunch of ideas that I could do. I'm pretty fast at typing, and of course I know the SDK. Anything stand out, or should I just choose one? Rotating cube. Rotating cube. Sure. Well, I've got demos of that already. <laughs> <laughs> so I could show you that one. And at symbol. Like text. Okay. Maybe that's too easy, but um, no, I could uh, add some effects to it. Scroller? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Flying text, some kind of effects in the at symbol, perhaps. All right. And that's just about, that's the end. Okay. I can give you a link online. Yeah. It'll be no problem. Uh, I'll give you that after the talk. All right. Okay. Maybe I should bring up a chair. Um, now, there are two ways I could do this. I could either run it on there, or I could just show the simulator on the screen. Maybe at first we'll do the screen. So this is what the simulator looks like, and this is my Tetris game. So I'm using a space navigator to control it, which makes it a little bit more natural than a regular mouse. But before I get to too many demos here, much cooler to see it on there, I will start with a very minimalistic program. How does that look? OK. Is that readable? So this is actually my own text editor with smooth scrolling, something I started many years ago. And if I press F5, it should run, but it isn't because I forgot to do this. OK. So this is what my minimalistic program does so far. It draws some text, a line, a solid sphere, and a cone that's partially shaded over there. The cone has rounded ends with different radii. And here's the program, win main. 
and then you call the two initialization functions, and then here is the main loop. Voxy breathe is where it updates all the inputs such as keyboard, mouse, as well as the uh, space navigator that I have here. So as long as that returns a zero, then you want to keep running the game. At the very top of the loop, I sample the timer. Voxy clock returns a time in seconds as double floating point. And one of the things you want to do if you want your game to run the same speed in all machines is you want to calculate the frame period. I call that delta time, or DTIM. Um, for the keyboard control right now, I'm using scan codes. I have them memorized, but I realize not everyone does. I do have an H file that you can use if you need to do that. But uh, one happens to be the scan code for the escape key. So if you press escape, then it'll send a request to the SDK to quit. And then the next time it calls Voxy Breathe, it'll return a one. So the way this works is sort of similar to direct draw in that you lock video memory, you do your drawing, and then you unlock video memory. So Voxy Frame Start is where it locks the video memory. We can start drawing to our frame. The first thing I do is I set the coordinate system to be the current aspect ratio. This right here, I think I'm using 1 by 1 by 0.4 for the height in terms of aspect. So it'd be like this, and so on. So Voxy Drawbox will draw that rectangular frame. I'm going to comment out all this so you can just see the one thing it is drawing, the frame. It looks like it missed one of the... Huh. All right. So there are a few bugs still in the library. You might have noticed that it was only drawing 11 of the 12 legs there. Not a big deal. <laughs> OK. So I'll enable the frame as well as the line. So we have a line in the middle of our volume. And if I go down here, I can actually rotate it. It's a line. Nothing too exciting. So we specify the point one, the second point, and then here's the color. FFFFFF would be white, just HTML colors. Next, we have the sphere. And I've specified solid field for that. Here's the XYZ. This is the radius. And just for fun, let's put sine of time times 0.5. So now it's oscillating in radius. And of course, you don't see it half the time. So let's absolute value of the thing. Maybe multiply it by 4 to make it a little faster. That's more exciting. OK. And there are two ways you can draw a sphere. One is filled, and this is just as a shell, if you put a 0 there. And then here's the color. I did it for yellow, so it looks like the sun. You can make it magenta. Now, one of the things we do struggle with is brightness on this display because it is spread out over the entire volume. So usually solid filled will look better, at least to people who are sitting far away. Voxy draw cone is very similar to Voxy draw sphere. Imagine you have two spheres at different locations with different radii, and all it does is it just fills in the convex hole. So it's a very simple and easy to use primitive. It's something I've been using for a while. Very good for debugging things. You can use, use it to draw thick lines. Um, OK, and then next, Voxy draw sprite. I don't think that model is showing. Probably could, I must have a wrong path here. Hmm, let's just replace that. There he is. <laughs> so this is the mascot from my Avaldraw program. It was originally based on one of the monsters in Doom called the Caco Demon. Mm -hmm. I still call him Caco, although I completely overdid it. I mean, overdrew it by hand. So this is my artwork. It's programmer artwork. It's not meant to be submitted to any competitions. It's supposed to look a little geeky with his glasses and his little cone hat. 
kind of a comical character. Anyway, so yeah, I have the cosines and the sines here to make them rotate on the right and well, down vector. All right. And then finally, to do text, you see the high one in front. So that is being drawn by this print alpha. Let me just comment out the uh, model that's taken up so much space. So it's saying hi with a counter for each second. How do you draw text? Well, you have to specify three vectors. The first vector is the point that's the top left corner, which I've called PP. And then we have the right vector. That's the length of one width of a character. And then the PD is the height of the text. So point two is about one tenth of the way across the volume, since it goes from minus one to plus one. And then point four would be, I think that's about halfway. And then we have the color, we can change that, we can play around with this. Let's make it say at alpha, All right, wait, at scene, at party, let's call it at party. Took me a while. <laughs> at party. Okay, now we should make that more exciting, shouldn't we? How do we do that? Um, you know, today's flag day. So we could make it go up and down on a sine wave like a flag. Uh, in order to do that, I'd have to modulate the position. And I believe that would be the y axis. This isn't quite going to be what we want. It's going to move the entire word, but at least it'll show something. A little bit slow. And just to show that it is moving back and forth. So if I need to make that work like a flag, I'll have to split it into each character. So I'll do that quickly. Uh, don't really need to display that anymore. Okay. This will work. Okay, and then I lost this. That still work? Yep. Except they're all on top of each other. So we got it. Increase this at i times 0.2. There it is again. So it's working like it used to. And now let's make each character move in and out. So for that, I gotta add an i there. There we go. That's probably all I need to do in terms of showing the SDK. I think at this point we should go right to the demos on the real thing. So if you want to turn the lights on a little bit, but not too much, because we do struggle a little bit with that projector brightness. All right, maybe. Okay, that's enough. All right. If you'd like to come up and looks a lot better up close. <laughs>